Hey everybody, welcome back to Reborn This Way. My name is Seelan, and uh, I know I've been out for a little bit. Uh, I had some technical issues over this past month as far as getting my videos out and getting my content done. Um, but those should be all fixed by now. And um, so, I'm back. And thanks to Marvel, I got some content today. I did have some other more theological stuff to go over. Um, but I'll save that for my next episode. I wanted to go ahead and respond to this, and it's an article that came out not too long ago uh, about Marvel's Eternals, which is uh, a movie that has been um, heralded, at least by the LGBT community, for, a, for, for what they say, they allegedly say, is the first openly gay um, Marvel character, you know, movie star, superhero movie uh, character. And... Um, I wanted to address this because I did see the movie last night and I uh, knew it was going to be in there and uh, that was one of the things I was kind of looking to see how they delivered it, how they represented the movie. Um, and also because there was an article that came out uh, about a month ago, which again I wasn't able to respond to at the time because I was having technical issues, um, from none other than Out Magazine, which is an LGBT affirming magazine, um, about having Marvel's first gay couple, and they put, of course, their son as well. Um, and I wanted to address this because, you know, some people in at least the uh, Christian community uh, would probably think, oh, you know, they're, they're, they just keep putting LGBT stuff in these movies and, and, you know, they just won't leave us alone about it. And they haven't, it, they, it's one of the things that, this magazine is kind of implying is that it's not often done or the represent the representation from the LGBT community has not often done in film which I beg to differ as someone who was part of the LGBT community I have a laundry list of movies that I had watched um while I was still identifying as as a lesbian and so it's not like they have no form of representation in media um but I also want to respond to it too because there, you know, this content within movies isn't going to stop, um, and and I'm not saying that there's no reason or like don't complain about it anymore because it's not going to happen. Uh, I would I'm saying it as a, don't be surprised when it happens, uh, and one of the reasons is is because it is our fault in within the Christian community that you know this has been desensitized to the point that. It's, it's in movies that, you know, we would associate with, you know, younger kids, adults, younger adults, um, especially when it comes to comic book movies and, um, and Marvel. Um, so to get started, um, this, again, is from the magazine Out, and it's easy to look up if you just look up um, um, LGBT couple in the Eternals or gay couple in the Eternals. It'll probably be the first article that pops up. For me, it was the second one, but, um, any of them popping up to me isn't that great of an idea, but, um, and one of the reasons why I also want to kind of highlight this is because as someone who is a part of the LGBT community, the content like this didn't help. First off, when you, you go looking for things that affirm what you deem is your identity, and one of the things is that we put our own label as far as this, this is, this is us creating our own identity, um, and ignoring the identity Christ has given us. And when you're, when you're fighting that, or if you're trying to refuse the identity that Christ has for you, you go looking for content that will do nothing but affirm it. Um, and I, I, like I said, I'm not surprised to see that Marvel's doing it, but that's one of the things that we should look out for. Um, so to start off this article, of course, it is titled New Eternals Teaser Introduces Us to Marvel's First Gay Couple and Their Son. Again, this was a month ago, um, but it's still relevant. The movie is still in theaters. Um, again, I watched it last night. Um, and then, uh, it had, of course, it has a picture of the actor um, who plays the gay eternal. And it says, Gay Geeks, it's time to meet the MCU's first LBGTQ family. And it has a plus, but I've, it's at this time, it's just becoming a bunch of apple bit soap, and it's kind of aggravating. Uh, it's just going to get longer and longer, folks. 
All right, so it says here, we're only a month away from the release of Marvel Studios' la latest Chloe Zhao-directed blockbuster flick, The Eternals. And after being teased for years that the film is going to showcase some actual and meaningful LGBTQ superhero representation, it looks like all of our patience is finally paying off. Um, so let's unpack that. So first off, um, it says after being teased for years that the film will showcase an actual LGBTQ LGBTQ plus superhero representation it looks like their patience is finally paying off first off this is not the first time that Marvel has had any or has had LGBT representation in their content um, and to think about it in movies too it's not the first time in, in movies in blockbuster hits period that this has ha happened if you've been alive over the last 20 years which I'm, I'm sure most of you guys are um, that's not true first off uh, there are quite a few gay superheroes in the Marvel comic universe uh, and the biggest ones at least the ones that are live openly gay lifestyles according to the comics is Hulkling you got Iceman Vivian Hercules um, Phyla L uh, Vel, I'm sorry, I'm saying that wrong because I don't like her comic book and I don't read it that much. Um, North Star is a really big one. Miss America, as we've seen over the last few years. Moon Dragon, who's not as big and is an older one. Um, and then Wiccan, which I thought was kind of relevant considering that Wiccan is supposed to be um, Scarlet Witch and Thor's uh, son. And they named him Wiccan, which, again, Wiccan... It is kind of self-explanatory there. Um, so it's not the first time that there has been a Marvel superhero that's been gay. Um, it's not like they're not represented at all, which is kind of what it feels like this article is implying. Um, and as far as when it comes to patience paying off, um, in my experience with the LGBT community, especially with, um, with Out Magazine, uh, which I used to read quite a lot I don't read it as much I read it now just to see what they're coming up with now um, but out magazine glad um, which is another uh, gay affirming uh, lifestyle um, kind of conglomerate they, they do a lot of activism um, there's nothing patient about the way they work they they have legis let what was it a uh, um, they have people who are constantly going to produce productions to uh, to different uh, film companies trying to get this content in anywhere that they can. Um, I know that I watched a, an episode of, I think it was 911 um, the other day, and I think it was the newest one, and they have a gay couple in there. And, um, I mean, I don't watch the show religiously. That's probably the second or third episode I've watched, but... Um, They've got it in there. And, of course, you see it more in, in Disney shows, which are geared towards kids now. I mean, like, they have openly gay kid characters in their newer TV shows. I remember growing up, that was something that I did not see in in um, Disney TV shows. And I watched things like Lizzie McGuire, even Stevens, you know, the classics. Um, I'm hoping I'm not dating too many people there. I'm definitely dating myself. Um... But yeah, it, it's not something that they've been patient about and that they've been, you know, wor slowly working towards. It's been pretty, uh, it's pretty, a pretty big escalation as far as that. Um, and as far as gay affirming movies, there's been tons of gay affirming movies in here. I'm not, I'm only going to name a few and some of these I've watched, some of these, um, I have not, I think I've watched all of these actually. Uh, but uh, Blue is the Warmest Color, that one came out not too long ago. That was while I was in college. Um, Milk, uh, which is about the, the senator. Um, I think he was a senator. Um, I didn't enjoy it. It was kind of boring. Uh, the Kids Are All Right, that one was a big one. And, of course, that has Bruce, the guy who plays Bruce Banner in it. Um, Call Me By Your Name, which is a recent one. Everyone knows Brokeback Mountain. If you don't, you've probably been living under a rock because everyone talks about that at some point. Um, the movie Carol, um, which I saw while, because that came out while I was still 
I believe, within the community. Um, and then Imagine Me and You, which is one that I've watched quite a few times before. Um, and that was while I was still within the LGBT community as well. I've watched all of these, and that was all while I was still practicing homosexuality. Um, but there's a plethora. There's I, I know that the first list that I, I looked up, I think it was the top 35 LGBT uh, films of the 21st century, and that's just the 21st century. There have been there are there are some that are from the 20th century for those who uh, were born in um, before the turn of the century, and um, I'm I haven't seen the older ones, but there have been those. Um, most of those came out within the last um, within the last 20 years. Um, but there, so there's been no, and I didn't even name any TV shows that, that have LGBT couples in them. Um, and one of the things they're emphasizing here is a actual meaningful LGBTQ, uh, superhero representation. And, you know, that's one of the things that they have tried, um, getting in consistently for the last few years. I'd say the last 10 years is what they call an actual meaningful uh, representation for the LGBTQ community and um, I mean it, it's not something that we we haven't seen over the last 10-15 years it's something that's been consistent and um, unfortunately for um, the Christian community and for those who are you know who are trying to reach the LGBT community it's something that we haven't addressed and that's the reason why we're seeing it in bigger stuff now uh, or at least what we would consider bigger stuff. It's because when they started kind of itching it into some older film and some smaller TV shows as not as big characters, um, there wasn't as much of an outcry on it. And, um, and that's because of fear. People feared that if they said anything, uh, you're going to get judged and, um, you're going to get, you know, thrown out into the streets and people were going to just completely, you know, cast you out of civil society. Um, which, I mean, it is a fear. I mean, it's something that happens, but, you know, when we're looking at it from a Christian, Christian perspective, first off, we're not supposed to fear that type of persecution and we're supposed to stand for the truth regardless of what society thinks of us. We're supposed to stand outside of society as far as that's concerned. Um, uh, to continue on, uh, the, the new teaser spot posted on Marvel social media channels, um, that Fastos, and I'm going to, I'm going to ed edit out, not worry about the actors' names, but the superheroes involved, but Fastos is the first gay superhero, um, and in the trailer he's met by Cersei and Icarus, who are two other superheroes, uh, but he's not alone. Uh, by his side are his husband, who is played by uh, a Glad Media Award-winning uh, man, which again, I'm not going to point out his name, um, and their cute little son. And it's the kind of moment we've all dreamed of seeing in the mainstream big-budget title like this. And uh, again, that, and that goes to my point that there's a kind of delusion here that that the LGBTQ community thinks that they don't have enough representation. I'd say, I mean, from my perspective, I think we have, or at least they have, um, just talking like I was back in the community, that drop out memories, um, that they didn't have enough representation at all. Like, they, they, there's like this delusion like, oh, well, at the, no matter the amount of representation, it's just not enough. We got to get it into everything. Um, which is, is something that, I mean, if, if, if there was alcoholism that, like, just think of this. If alcoholism took the same stance, well, we need to get more alcoholism represented into film. And that there's just not enough. And there's a meaningful thing about alcoholism um, and about that relationship with alcohol that needs to be represented and it's not represented enough. Like, how would we react to that when it came to that? I mean, I'm sure most people, you know, know that alcoholism is not a good thing. Um, it's actually very damaging. And to see, to see someone trying, or at least mainstream media trying to push it as if it's a positive thing and that it doesn't destroy lives and, and put that into, um, their TV shows and their movies 
like the LGBT community is trying to do with homosexuality and you know the LGBT the alphabet soup soup that we got going here um there would be pretty decent outcry from people who are you know from everybody probably um and because we know the same thing with with opioid addictions um we know that those kind of things are damaging to not only your physical self but those around you and we wouldn't want that represented in uh, represented as, as, uh, what would say it strongly in our media, as would be now, and there would be outcry, and people would be like, "Yeah, that's justified. Okay, I get it. We don't want that kind of damaging thing in there to encourage other people to do this damaging thing." Um, but the LGBTQ IP plus community, uh, as well as a good majority of America who who don't even identify with that, don't deem it to be that bad of a thing because they, again, they think, um, they believe it's a lifestyle that's not chosen, but that's like thrust upon them. Therefore, there's no point in fighting it kind of thing. Um, why would, you, again, the, the, the concept that always comes up is like, why would you fight something that people didn't have a choice in, in determining and that doesn't hurt you? And, um, to me, that's not a good enough argument because it does, first off, as a former LGBT individual, uh, it does hurt you. It does hurt the person who is practicing it. Um, and it's not something that is, you know, thrust upon you. It's something that's, that you choose through either allowing yourself to be conditioned by, um, society and by the world, um, or by, you know, your own determination. Um, and it's usually by outside factors with, you know, the fact that we are naturally sinful people and being encouraged that the sin that you're living is not really that bad of a sin. Um, and, you know, that that's damaging. I know for me, like I've, I've commented before, I've, there, the depression, the, um, the emptiness, the, um, was an impulsive activities that I did when I was in college and, uh, that could have gotten me killed. Um, those, those are damaging to the self and it came from, um, me living a lifestyle that was homosexual and, um, you know, not recognizing it for the sinful nature that it was, um, trying to validate it within myself. Um, Continuing on with this article, you know, they go into what it says in the trailer and then, um, you know, it says here, while we only caught a very short glimpse at the, the film's queer family, it didn't seem like much considering the MCU, uh, MCU's long history of being dominated by straight characters. This is actually pretty exciting stuff, especially for LGBTQ superhero fans. Um... And Henry, who I believe is uh, gay in real life, the, the man who plays Festos, um, said, I never in a million years thought I'd be part of the MCU, uh, Henry told Entertainment Weekly. Earlier this year about his, uh, earlier this year about his uh, groundbreaking role as Festos, I've always been a huge fan. I've been obsessed with the concept of superheroes and the concept of mankind needing saving. And I think that when you get these groups of people together, you just have these intimate senses of superpowers and saving humanity. It's something that we all kind of need. It literally brings everyone together regardless of where you're from. And I'm freaking out that I'm part of it. Um, <laughs> funny you should say that, sir. Um, but yeah, the reason, first off, for MCU, the reason why it's been dominated by straight characters, because that's the natural state of most relationship, is straight relationships. Um, it was also started by people who, during World War II, um, I mean, that wasn't a question. LGBT was still, you know, taboo at the time, around uh, the early beginnings of MCU's comic book writing. Um but, you know, it's one of the things, of course, is it's saying here, it's pretty exciting stuff, especially for LGBT superhero fans, is that, you know, it's not some, it, to me, that's not an innocent statement. Um, to me, it's a statement of, the, it is of looking for the validation. 
And like I said, within the LGBT community, there's never a point where you're satisfied with the validation. You're always looking for someone to validate your lifestyle. That's why they're so aggressive with getting all this stuff out there and getting it into the media is that it just one person affirming is never enough. You need to have everybody affirming. And if they don't, of course, you're an enemy and you should be shunned and cast out into the streets and left to wherever in all that. Um, it's never enough. That's why you have people who are uh, like Michael Vines who are writing books to validate their lifestyle. Um, you have Out Magazine that focuses on the LGBT community. Uh, so people within the community go and read, usually read only from stuff like Out Magazine. Um, and then you have people who are making LGBT affirming shows so that those shows are the only ones that LGBTQ people go and watch. Um, like the L word, for instance. Uh, that was an example. Um, I'm ashamed to say I did re watch at least some of that show. Um, and it's just nothing. It's nothing but something that a person who is looking for validation uh, would find entertainment in. Um, so it, it's it's not an innocent statement. It's it's like the song that, <laughs> that uh, I, I can't remember the group. But that it was basically a group of gay men who were singing a song about vaccinations. And they also sang a song basically telling everybody that they're looking to indoctrinate your kids into a lesbian gay lifestyle. And they're looking to convert your kids to it. Um, it's that just as far as, you know, the media, is con uh, the movie media uh, is concerned. Movie and um, comic book media. And, um, you know, it's something that we need to look out for. It's something that we need to be aware of, um, because it's, it's not something that's going to stop in the near future. And it's something that people are becoming less and less, um, eager to actually talk about. And, um, that's one of the reasons why I started this podcast to talk about things like this, because somebody needs to talk about it. Somebody needs to... Um, to kind of shed light on the fact that this isn't something that um, we should take, you know, just sitting down. I mean, I'm not saying go out and, and start trouble as far as, you know, being, um, you know, hateful and all that. But we do need to, um, to realize that the, the longer we just sit here and say nothing about the LGBT movement... Um, the harder it's going to be when it's, heck, your own kids dealing with it, um, or, or getting out of the church from LGBT affirming churches, um, which is, which is sad in and of itself. Um, we have to be vigilant and we have to be aware that, you know, th these, this isn't just, you know, a thing that society has to deal with the, the souls of these people of you know of, of me at the time are being twisted into things that they shouldn't be because we're you know allowing a media to make homosexuality and the lgbt um affiliated identities to be not as bad as they are um you know, they're, we're, we're making it, we're allowing mainstream media to take the concept of sin out of the LGBT identity and practice. And that, I mean, we're not supposed to be surprised by this. I mean, that's one of the things that Christ said in Revelations. We're not supposed to be surprised. Uh, he also said it in the, the Gospels as well. We're not supposed to be surprised at all that this is happening. We're supposed to be diligent in approaching it and we're supposed to be ready seeing these signs that of course the Lord is recom is coming back, but we're also not supposed to just sit there and do nothing. And it's just like, uh, I was just reading today the, um, the parable of, uh, the women, uh, with the oil. I mean, there were people, there were the women who saw the sign that the bridegroom was coming and they prepared for it. Then there was the women who did nothing thinking that it would be all right if they did nothing and they were not prepared and they got left out. Um, 
And I mean, that's that's supposed to be a sign of our salvation. That's also supposed to be a sign of the end coming. We're supposed to see these signs and know that soon God is going to be returning. But we're not just to go st- uh, supposed to go, oh, yeah, God's returning soon. So there's not really anything that I need to do. I could just sit here and wait for him. I mean, that's not being pr- a productive, saved Christian. Um, it would be... I would be probably one of the women without the oil when the bridegroom comes. If I, I being saved from the homosexual lifestyle did nothing to address the sins, the sinfulness and the destruction of the homosexual, homosexual lifestyle afterwards. And, um, I, I'm not, I really don't want to be that person who, when I'm standing in front of, of Christ and he is, you know, I'm giving account for, you know, how I, I used his testimony in my life to say, oh, I didn't do anything with it. I just accepted that I was saved and told nobody. <laughs> We're not going to do that here. At least I'm not. Um, and, uh, you know, I want people to know that I care enough about their their eternity that I am going to say and tell the truth that homosexual ho- homosexuality is a sin, it's wrong, and it's destructive, not only to your physical being, but to your soul. Um, and stuff like Marvel having this content within their movies, though they're probably not going to stop there, is not okay. Um, and if you're going to watch it, watch it carefully. And if you have people, kids that you take to go see this movie, which I, I mean, it's not a rated R movie. It doesn't have a whole lot of seriously bad content in it. Um, but it's something that you just don't go and not explain things about. You know, when the movie's done, if they were asking, they probably won't ask about the LGBT couple, but you should still take a, take a point to say, Hey, look, you know, this was in the movie, but according to Christ, it's wrong. It's not a good lifestyle. It's destructive. And they're painting it in a light that it is good for you. And it's not. And that's the biggest thing about the media, as far as the LGBT community is concerned, is that they paint, um... You, they sugarcoat and they sparkle up these LGBT, um, was it, affirming couples and relationships and so that it looks attractive. And it, it can be very attractive when they do that. And a lot of people are going to fall for that attractiveness. But you got to be the kind of Christian that says, look, it looks attractive and look, and Satan, who is your enemy, is going to make sin look attractive to you. But you need to you know, not give into that temptation. They might not be tempted, but they might also, they might not be tempted in that way, but they might be tempted to not say anything about it ever just because of the way that it is glamorized in the media. Um, and again, we need to be careful of that. And I don't want to go too much further. I think I've said what I need to say. Um, but you know, it's again, we need to be diligent we need to not be afraid to say what the truth is and worry about the backlash because we're going to get backlash. Again, I've, I've said this many times that one of the things that Christ warns is that if we are for him and if we live with Christ in our hearts because the world hates Jesus, they're going to hate us. And since we are disciples of Jesus, we are um, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are fellow heirs uh, for those who are saved who listen we're people are going to hate us regardless so one of the things we just need to forget worrying about off the bat is that whether people are going to like us or not um again i'd rather be hated for telling somebody the truth and hopefully that truth planted a seed that they would eventually be saved and live for eternity with christ than not be hated at all and the person i could have told the truth um to ends up living for eternity in hell. Um, uh, someone's soul, your, your soul costs way too much and is worth way too much to Christ for me to not say anything about it. And I am going to say it and I'm going to keep saying it, uh, because I love you guys. I do not want anybody who listens to this podcast, whether they are gay, straight, lesbian, you know, within that community, or not, because I'm sure I know I have some listeners who are not who are looking to see how they can talk to people who are that they know who are. 
I want all of you guys to join me in heaven because uh, I'm confident in my relationship with Christ and I know that I will be joining him when I die or get raptured. Hopefully it's the rapture first. Um, but if it's not, then that's fine. But I, I don't want any of you guys to not be there in heaven with Jesus Christ living for eternity because the alternative, the alternate, ah, I can't speak. The alternate of that is just too horrible and, and to, to even consider, like, I, I don't want anybody going there, even people that I don't necessarily like. And there's a lot of people that I'm, I'm not a big fan of. I still love them as Christ loves them, but I'm not a big fan uh, of them. I don't even want them to go to hell. I mean, that's just, like I said, their, their soul is worth too much to me to not say anything to them about it. And they may hate me, but that's fine. I'm going to love them anyways. I'll kill them with kindness. Kill them with love. Um, but anyway, all right. I think I've said what I needed to say. Again, I love you guys. And thank you all for listening and or watching, depending on whether you're watching from YouTube. Please like and share. I know people don't you know, like to hear that, but the only way that this content even gets further than like the, the back page is by people liking and sharing, um, leave a comment, um, please get this to someone you think needs to hear it. And it, it might not be this particular episode. It may be one of my former episodes, but if someone needs to hear the truth, please direct them toward the truth. Do not be afraid to tell them the truth. Um, if you love them, then the fears out of the way. Loving means telling the truth. Um, so thank you guys again. Um, I hope you all have a blessed day. Uh, remember Jesus loves you. He loved you enough to die for you, for your sins. He died, was buried, rose from the dead and has sanctified you for those who have accepted him. And he did that for you. And if you were the only person on earth, he would still do it for you. Um, because he loves you that much. Um, thank you guys again. Have a blessed afternoon, evening, or morning whenever you listen to this. And, uh, as always, God bless.